Welcome to our show, The Automobile Brief, where we dive into the latest and greatest from the world of cars, and maybe a bit more. Today, we've got a mix of electrifying news, heart-pounding drama, and a glimpse into the future of driving. So, buckle up, and let's hit the road with today's news roundup. First up, Volkswagen is sparking some serious nostalgia with its plans to revive the Scout SUV brand, but with a modern twist. They're bringing all-electric off-road capable SUVs to the US market under the name Scout Motors. It's like a blast from the past, but with zero emissions and all the electric power you can handle. VW's move is a bold play in the electric vehicle game, aiming to capture hearts with the iconic Scout brand, now electrified. It's a mix of old-school cool and future tech, and we're here for it. Switching gears, the news takes a more serious turn with a couple of dramatic stories from the law enforcement world. A suspect has been captured after a two-day manhunt following the fatal shooting of a New Mexico state police officer, while over in Florida, a deputy's confrontation with a suspect ended in gunfire. These stories remind us of the dangers faced by those who protect and serve, and our thoughts go out to all involved. Finally, we're looking ahead to the future of driving, and it's not just about the cars themselves but what powers them. Hawaii is tackling the lithium-ion battery conundrum, seeking sustainable solutions for recycling and reusing the batteries that power electric vehicles and renewable energy technology. It's a crucial step toward a greener future, and other states might want to take notes. That's a wrap for today's news highlights on The Automobile Brief. From electric SUVs making a comeback to the serious challenges faced by law enforcement, and the quest for sustainable energy solutions, there's never a dull moment in the world of automobiles and beyond. Please stay tuned for more detailed content on these stories. VW is reviving a storied American brand to sell electric SUVs. CNN. Volkswagen, VW, has revived the Scout SUV brand and created a subsidiary company to design, build and sell vehicles in the U.S. market. Scout Motors will introduce a new brand of all-electric off-road capable SUVs, aiming to tap the nostalgia of the American market for the Scout brand. The German carmaker sees the revival of the Scout brand as a foundation for an electric SUV and pickup brand in the U.S. VW has a 5% market share for vehicle sales in the U.S., with the mainstream VW brand accounting for less than half of that. The rest comes from Audi, Porsche, Bentley and Lamborghini. VW executives frequently refer to the North American market as a source of untapped potential. Scout Motors could be a key part of tapping some of that potential. However, it is still not clear exactly how Scout's vehicles will be sold in the U.S. Scout Motors has not yet announced whether they will be sold through VW dealers, through a separate dealer network or just direct to the customer, as startups such as Rivian and Tesla do. Suspect captured after two-day manhunt in fatal shooting of New Mexico State Police Officer. Yahoo! A suspect has been arrested in connection with the shooting of a New Mexico State Police Officer who was shot and killed on a highway near the small city of Tucumcari last week. The suspect, Jeremy Smith, was captured following an officer-involved shooting on Sunday with the Bernalillo County Sheriff's Office. Officer Justin Hare was shot after he offered Smith a ride to town when he responded to a call of a driver with a flat tire. After shooting Hare, Smith allegedly pushed him to the passenger side of the vehicle, got in and drove off. Hare later died in hospital. Smith is also a suspect in the murder of Phoenicia Machado IV, a paramedic from South Carolina. Pasco deputy fatally shoots man after fight in car, video shows. Yahoo! A Florida sheriff's deputy shot and killed a 40-year-old man following a fight inside a moving vehicle on Saturday evening. The incident occurred after the officer approached the man, Paul Smith, outside a convenience store. The officer believed Smith to be a suspect in a recent battery case and asked him to speak with him. Body-worn camera footage of the incident shows the officer trying to remove Smith from the vehicle, but Smith starts driving with the officer inside. The deputy repeatedly screams at Smith to stop the car before yelling, stop the car, you're gonna get shot. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement is investigating the incident. Hawaii seeks answers to state's lithium-ion battery conundrum. Yahoo! A bill has been introduced in Hawaii to establish a working group to examine how to recycle and reuse lithium-ion batteries that come with renewable energy technology. Hawaii has increasing numbers of electric vehicles, EVs, and solar panels with battery storage which will eventually need to be recycled or disposed of. In its initial form, House Bill 1972 sought to set up an EV battery recycling program using environmentally friendly practices. However, after pushback, the bill now aims to set up a working group within the Hawaii State Energy Office to make policy recommendations on recycling EV batteries. The companion bill, Senate Bill 2311, was deferred. EV adoption in Hawaii is rising, 
but the state is limited in how it can get lithium-ion batteries to recycling facilities on the mainland. In addition, shipping the batteries is expensive, and carriers have strict guidelines for transporting them. If shipping is no longer an option in the future, there is concern that businesses and consumers will resort to illegal dumping, which would pose health and environmental hazards, as well as fire risks. The Honolulu Fire Department has already begun tracking lithium-ion-related fires, with 18 recorded in 2023, although this represents a small percentage of total fire-related incidents. Jason Groover, owner of recycling firm Eopala, said that Hawaii needs a pre-processing facility for lithium-ion materials on island to lower costs for shipping or to avert a disaster if shipping is no longer possible. The Hawaii State Energy Office has proposed building a demonstration facility at an estimated cost of $20 million. It would be located at the Kapolei facility of recycling firm Radius Recycling and would break down batteries into more manageable pieces and materials for safer shipping. Two things China must focus on to hit its economic growth target. South China Morning Post. China's Premier Li Chang has set an ambitious target of achieving around 5% economic growth for the country this year. To achieve this, the Chinese government should implement a substantial stimulus plan to boost consumption, fortify high-tech production, and increase exports. China should also focus on increasing government investment and spending, stimulating consumption, and expanding exports. The government should invest more in subsidies to encourage Chinese consumers to upgrade to energy-saving appliances, electric vehicles, and smartphones manufactured by Chinese companies. Additionally, China should strengthen its manufacturing and domestic technology sectors to sustain global competitiveness. Moscow flights grounded by mass Ukrainian drone strikes. Telegraph. Ukraine launched a series of drone strikes against Russia, resulting in the closure of the Crimean Bridge and flight restrictions in Moscow. Russian authorities suspended car traffic over the bridge without explanation, while airports in Moscow imposed restrictions after four Ukrainian drones were shot down near the capital. A fifth drone was later down near Domodedovo Airport, with footage suggesting a drone strike caused damage to a building. A fire broke out at an oil refinery in Slavyansk on Kuban following a sixth drone strike in a week. The Russian Defense Ministry said it had downed all 17 drones attacking Krasnodar. How Boeing went from an American dream to national embarrassment. Telegraph. Boeing is facing a major crisis as a number of incidents have raised concerns over the safety of its planes. The company's share price has fallen 27% since the start of 2022. The incidents include a door plug falling off a Boeing 737 MAX 9 jet, a crack being found on a cockpit window, a 747-8 being forced to make an emergency landing in Miami, a 737 MAX sliding off a runway in Houston, Flames being spotted spewing from the engine of a 737 to 900 and a tire falling off a 777. A safety whistleblower at a Boeing factory in South Carolina was found dead in his car from an apparent suicide, while a Boeing 787 to 9 Dreamliner nosedived during a flight from Sydney to Auckland, injuring dozens of passengers. Economists have warned that a collapse in enthusiasm for Boeing could affect America's balance of trade. How to avoid being caught out by EV range? Telegraph. Electric cars in the UK are unable to meet their advertised ranges, according to a study by What Car? The magazine tested 12 mainstream electric vehicles and found that their range per full charge was, on average, 29.9% less than the official test figures quoted by manufacturers. In one instance, a vehicle achieved a range that was more than a third lower than the official figures. The discrepancy is the result of the difference between official government tests and real-world usage. Owners and enthusiasts have been aware of the issue for some time. The magazine advised buyers to expect to achieve between 70% and 80% of the advertised range, depending on weather conditions. Extreme temperatures, using heating or cooling systems and higher speeds can all contribute to a reduction in an electric vehicle's range. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.